All right, this is 6 minutes gone past 12 from this side of the radio. Good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Welcome to the Big Question on Women Radio WFM 91.7. The Big Question is a program where we discuss and profile solutions to issues affecting us as a nation and our citizens. The Big Question is broadcast on weekdays at 12.05 p.m. And of course, do well to join the conversation by contributing or reacting to the big question. You can call 07000 917 917 or send us a text message or WhatsApp message on 0703 175 6537. You can also send in your contributions to our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube at WFM 917. My name is Blessing Agbeit. On today on the B question, we will be discussing 16 days of activism on violence against women. Now, today marks the day nine in the series of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. The 16 days of activism campaign is an annual international movement which is aimed at addressing um, issues of violence against women and girls. And the campaign began on Friday, November 25. The the National Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women will run up until 10th of December, the Human Rights Day. Now, the, during the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, we will be reviewing some organizations' achievements and their strategies in the prevention and elimination of violence against women and girls. My guest for today is Reverend Juliet Benitia. She is the president of Precious Jewel Ministries. And like I said earlier, we will be discussing 16 days of activism on violence against women. Good afternoon, Juliet. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My pleasure to be with you again. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining the conversation today. Yes, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Okay, so let me even ask you, how has your day been? I guess you've been in so many activities, yeah? My day has been phenomenal. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm actually at the retreat mm. where I took some women to the retreat. Okay. We needed, we needed to do a retreat from Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. So today, this day, I have also helps the women to make choices mm. in pampering themselves. Wow. This is so nice. Right now, I some mean. of them are doing the energy room. Mm. Some of them are going to be receiving the massage. Wow. Some of them are going to be doing a food a detox. Mm. Because one of the things that I found out that women do not know how to pamper themselves. Themselves, it's yeah. It's a whole lot of, mm. of suffering and things that suffering and womanhood is mm. synonymous. Mm. It doesn't work that way. That so way. We have a retreat mixed with spiritual issues, mm. a dynamism of uh, relationships, mm. mental issues, mm. but especially the physical now mm. of taking care of the body. We had a health talk on how to live a uh have a better living, mm. but now after the health talk, now have the practical of pampering mm. our bodies mm. with that massage, mm. energy room, wow. and all the things. This is really amazing. nice. This is really nice. Thank you so much, Juliet, for the good work you're doing. Absolutely. All right, let's delve into the conversation. Now, Juliet, let me ask you this. How would you rate our success in Nigeria, you know, in combating violence against women, particularly in places of worship? Well, uh, for me, in the, uh, if I put it on the scale of uh, one to five, mm -hmm. uh, one being at least, five being the highest, I would say we are still at two mm. or 2.5. We are still doing very badly, and it's one of my one of the leading agenda on my table for 2023 mm. and upwards mm. of confronting it headlong mm. because it's ongoing. Mm. It's not of God. It's highly, if uh, coming from my own religious uh, background, it's highly demonic, mm. Mm. and so it is not of God and should not be tolerated mm. nor accepted by any standard. All right. Thank you so much for, for that one. Now, let me ask you, you know, over time we've had of instances and cases of, you know, people being assaulted in places of worship and all of that. Now, to address this, what do you think we can do? First and foremost, information is power. Mm -hmm. um, even people are wearing it. Uh, even the pastor, the leaders, even in the religious sector, first of all, they are human beings. Mm who took up a mission, and it depends on the degree of their background and training. 
certain things do happen. Mm. However, we are responsible, like my organization, um, being a foremost one of the uh, our focus being women leadership okay. and also advocacy. Mm. Uh, I believe that the churches have been really well informed. Mm. So I'm working. I'm trying to collaborate with other organizations who have been doing this for years, mm. and also with your radio um, station mm-hmm. on how we can do more. Because we have not really penetrated the church. The the understanding is in, is re- reactional. Mm-hmm. And reactional does not build um, a, a great mindset. There should be a mind shift. And every mind shift starts with bombardment of information. Mm-hmm. Then from mind shift, we now enter into become a culture where it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Because most of the people, even though they are Christians, they, in the in the mood, what we call in the container of their head, is actually cultural. They are more cultural than Christian. So the value of self-control, the value of tolerance, the value of patience is non-existent. Mm. And these are fundamental values in Christianity. And it's important that the, we, we, we recognize this. And so for us, 2023, we believe that more information. Then when we have the more information, we have call centers where people can reach out for help. Then later on, also, we, we want to work with those who are collaborating on those who offend to that level, where we now have an opportunity for counseling. And when you're resisting counseling, then we end up with an arrest. Hmm. All right, thank you very much for that one. 12 minutes gone past 12 from the side of the radio. And you're listening to The Big Question on WFM 91.7. And of course, we are doing this in commemoration of the 16 Days of Activism, and which is an annual international movement aimed at addressing issues of violence against women and girls. My name is Blessing Agbeto, and my guest for today is Reverend Juliet Benitia. She is the president, Precious Jewel Ministries. And of course, you can join the conversation by calling 07000 917 917 or you send a WhatsApp or text message to 0703 175 6537. You can log on to our website from anywhere and everywhere www.wfm917.com Download the mobile app WFM917 Follow us across all social media platforms WFM917 Now Juliet uh, you said something about you being peculiar about leadership like you're a leadership enthusiast so I'm interested in this one What measures and strategies have you put in place as we speak now to fight against violence towards women and girls at particularly at what you know, yes. I mean, among the groups of women that have mentored over the years, okay. among the group of women that have led, it can happen in my circle. Mm. So because I have come to the point of teaching my women that mm. it's ungodly, it is unacceptable, mm. it is not biblical, it doesn't give the man any right. Mm. There is no right that has been given to the man or the woman for abuse of any form. So it does happen, but when they come to my organization or the ministry, it comes to a halt. But now I am escalating. I told you by 2023, I'm not escalating. I'm establishing the ministry in another dimension for social impact. Okay. Whereby we need to let women now know. Because woman leadership also is connected to the tolerance, whether, because if you don't recognize your woman leadership, who you are and your identity, you will tolerate anybody giving you nonsense. Mm. So you need to recognize even for the single girl who's not yet married, talking about the abuse, the sexual abuse, violence of any form, mm. is tolerated the women because in the psychic of some women, leaving the men out of this ball game, is that the women speak herself as an inferiority person. Mm. And that's why you have a mother-in-law who looks at the daughter-in-law and thinks that she's less than her son. Mm. And so even women are to be told the truth that tolerance for violence is ungodly and is a sin that ends up in hell. And I want to say it very boldly. So right now in the church, where I belong, I belong to the Pentecostal uh, arm of the church. I'm a, I'm a leader at the state level. And so I am taking up the matter. We're escalating. We're escalating. Because it's happening with the pastor's home. It's happening with Christian men. It's happening with all sorts of men. There's nobody on their forehead that you can detect if it's truly happen, happening. And so women must learn to report. Sometimes women think by reporting a spouse, they are sinning against God. But we want to let them know, the Bible says you need to learn how to cry out. 
So that crying out, we want to teach them, mm. we also want to create a safe space by the grace of God mm. that women can know that if they call, they will find safety. And also, I go the extra mile to talk to husbands. Mm. The women around me, there's no husband that is unreachable. I don't care what head you carry. I go to the husband and let them know that I now know what they are doing. And if they continue, they have me to contend with and the society. So it is doable, but we need to campaign more. Even in society that's liberal as uh, the West is still happening, especially the COVID-19 came out with a lot of reports that uh, abuses were taking place. Mm. But it's fundamental of the individual upbringing and the value base of that individual determines what they do. So bottom line, instead of us just dealing with the symptom called the violence, mm. we need to go to, go to the root cause mm. of, the, of the individual being burned to that level. And as long as you're coming branches, you're not going to create a, a sustainable solution. So for me, I believe in sustainable solutions. So we are going to the root cause of violence, which is if what they know in their head and the value base in which they were raised. So mamas did do the homework for their boys. And vice versa as a kid movie. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for that one. Now, let's just be direct. Let's address the culture of silence because so many times a lot of people have, a lot of women, uh -huh, women and girls have been abused. They have, you know, undergone violence and all of that. And they've been quiet all along. So let me ask you, as someone who is an advocate for women, because I see you as that person who feels like every woman should be in the position of leadership. Every woman should be liberated, you know, working for the good cause of women. So how how would you address the culture of silence on violence against women and girls, particularly in worship centers by religious heads and their partners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things I'm doing right now, I've already spoken that I want to um, use your platform, platform and have a space to speak. Mm. And also because I'm already in the church leadership, I'm okay. doing the pastors around me. Okay. I'm asking for opportunity to also speak for fundamental. Listen to this. The greatest problem with violence, mm -hmm. the human tolerance of it. Mm. The Bible says, give no room mm. to evil. Um, uh, Mike Murdoch made a quote out from the, what he had read from the Bible, what you tolerate, you can't change. Silence of that is also a proof that the woman feels that she's inferior. Mm. And the inferiority of a woman in her mind is the greatest undoing of her. And therefore, if I want to set a woman totally free sustainably, sustainably, I need to let her know who she is and who she is. That even on the day God created mankind, he created a male and female. Mm. And he gave both of them dominion. And dominion was not over each other. Mm. God didn't tell the man, dominate your wife. Or your wife is your play, uh, your footmark. Mm. And so women tolerate it because in the psychic of the woman, in the order of marriage, because the man is the head of the home, which in the original text means the man is the chief servant of the home. Because Jesus Christ said, if you want to be great, you got to serve. So every man who is beating his wife, abusing his wife, you are less than a man. You are the one who is inferior because you are working less than the optimal that God has created. Because being a husband is about cultivating, is about improving, is about raising the stakes for the woman. So a woman goes into a home from her father's house, all happy-go-lucky girl, and she ends up in a man's house where she gets buried, beaten, and all her joy goes away. That is not of God. I don't care what man it is out there. Mm. I don't know who you are. I don't give a, a flying monkey. I don't care what you think you are. Mm. We are ready in 2020. I've already set up a set of women who have the same courage that I do. But first and foremost, I have to address the psyche of the woman first. Mm. Because he that, he that is taking it over the years and keep it silent. She is a perpetrator. Mm. She is an, she is the one causing it to continue. Mm. She can tell me why she is not taking because she doesn't want her marriage to break. Where her marriage is not a ticket to heaven and she's tolerating it. And the Bible says they that do evil and the ones that encourage them to do evil in Romans 1, they both the evil and the evil to our tolerance will be punished. Mm. So if a woman thinks by keeping silent, she's virtuous. I 
I will let her know by the authority given to me, not just as a minister of God, as someone who has been in this kingdom for four decades. I will let her know a woman who has read the scripture and is anointed by God that she's a liar and she has been told lies. Mm-hmm. That she needs, she says, needs to be delivered. Mm-hmm. Because we can take her out of that abuse. I've had a friend, two marriages, she was abused. Why? The first time she was abused, she didn't deal with the psychic of the reason why she tolerated it for years. The second one happened until she almost lost her life. Mm. Why would you be abused twice? Because you as a woman, you have a problem. So it's easy for us to begin to say, let's stop abuse, get the woman out of the abuse. But how do we get the abuse tolerance, uh, tolerance in the woman's psychic? How do we get the woman to understand this is not God, this is for me? And that's why the synergy... Uh, 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 yes, uh, who passed la- yes. As a church girl, yes. exactly, as a church girl and a church minister, mm. and having a husband in court who mm. is a Christian that tolerates this nonsense until she died of whatever sickness, the depression in her life can multiply any sickness. Mm. So the husband can give any excuse whether he did it directly or indirectly. Or not. The mm. man slaughter, you're either killing someone directly or indirectly, you're still guilty. Mm. But she was more guilty. Before mm. God, she was more guilty. Because she tolerated that which was dark, that which was evil, that was not of God. Because she feels that as a woman, based on her cultural context, not Christian context, her cultural context, that that man is superior, so he has some right. No, you do not have a right. No man is superior over a woman, and no woman is superior over a man. The Bible says in Christ is equality. The servanthood of all of us serving one another in our marriage is not because one is inferior to the other. And those are the things I speak about to the women. You are not a hero. And anyone who's trying to pull an inferiority laid along you, you've got to reject it before God. Because the scripture says that he who knows how to do good and you don't do it, it is sin. So if you know beating battery is not of God and you are tolerating it, guess what? You are a sinner with a man who is beating you. Mm. Both of you, in the sight of Yahweh, are guilty. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Juliet, for that one. 07000 That is how to reach out to me to be a part of the conversation today. And of course, you're listening to The Big Question. My name is Blessing Agueto. And the big question we're having today is in commemoration of the 16 days of activism campaign to actually address the issue of violence against women and girls. This particular campaign started on Friday, November 25, 2022, and it is going to run up until 10th of December 2022. The whole essence is to ensure that we make the world a safe place for our women and our girls. My guest for today is Reverend Juliet Vinitier. She's the president of Precious Jewel Ministries, and of course, we are still discussing in line with the 16 days of activism on violence against women. Now, Juliet, I want to ask you this one. Talking about your own religious center, what kind of support is available for survivors in your worship center? Let me tell you the truth. Mm. The church, like I said, I put on the scale of one to five. One be the lowest, five being the highest. The church is probably at two point five. Because the church is very much ignorant and mm. they have made people they preach the doctrine of long suffering and patience in the negative way. The doctrine of long suffering and patience and all the fruit of the spirit of Galatians chapter five was not to tolerate the darkness. Mm. It was for relationship with humanity and your relationship with God. Mm. So when God said you should do long suffering is to ensure that you have deep room to the people to change. Mm. But it doesn't mean that when somebody is stabbing you, abusing you, that you should tolerate it. There is no way in scripture mm. that says you should be tolerated. And therefore, part of what we are also doing is getting the church to take responsibility. Just as we have been able, even in the political sector, to get the church to become more politically aware and have like a political department. We're trying to get the church also to be aware and have a center where there is a place for the women to be safe. Mm. And it will be invested in the short. And my ministry, because it's para church, more like outside the church, okay. we're creating a center where you can report any man or woman of God that is abusing you. Mm. That's what we're doing from 2023. But we have done our work on the ground because as you begin to deal with issues of women, for example, a woman came to me early in the hours of the morning and she said her husband just beat her 
and uh, we have slack of it and all that. Okay, let's just call your dad immediately. We need to inform the elders and let the meeting be called. Because I find that when violence is exposed, especially at the nascent level, at the lowest level, it gets cut off in the birth. So I told her to let, let's call out to her father. So she called her father. We called, they called the family meeting. And the father had to tell the young man, I mean, her husband then, they were both mm. young, but they're no longer young, that when you were doing your, um, um, you know, the ballet, mm. stretching down, yes. you take the wife, that when you were getting up, mm. that handover, it came to you. Mm. He said, no, he didn't hand the key to me. He said, very well. Mm. He said, me, I'm not picking my child. You will come and pick your child. That, what did you pay? Did you send my daughter even to school? Mm. Do, who do you think you are? That ended it like a last cricket mm. because she refused to be silent. She ran to me and I called the solution because I know the solution to this nonsense. The mm. tolerance of violence is always when it's hidden. It increases in darkness mm. when the, the people the, are not exposed. The moment you expose it, another friend of mine is abroad. So this is also happening in the West. Her husband has been doing it. She uh, tolerated it. So she, I got to know. She picked up the phone and called her mother-in-law in Nigeria. I said, well, just for your information, I'm about to call the police on your farm. Mm. And uh, uh, the ma- ma- uh, mother-in-law was shouting, oh, hey, Joe, hey, Joe. She said, Mama, it's too late. Hey, Joe, was when you should have brought up your son and told him what to do. So she called the police. Mm. The husband had her calling the police. Mm. He takes the back door and jumps over the fence and disappears. Comes back after two days hmm. and was begging and begging and begging. Till today, 10 years have passed, there's nothing like that. Hmm. Violence improves and increases when the tolerance of the woman is high and she doesn't know that she can't go out. Two, that she accepts it as a cultural norm. Three, she sees herself as a superior, as a second-class citizen. Mm. So therefore, the man is superior. He has that right. No, he doesn't have the right. Mm. It does not. Being head of the home is not being king. All of us are kings. The scripture says in Revelation, he has made us a, a, a kingdom of priests and kings. So I'm a king. My husband is a king. We are meant to submit to, to one another and I'm meant to submit to him in agreement that though I am king, in the order of marriage to establish peace and harmony, I submit to his kingship, to help him become a better king, as he helps me to be a better king. But I'm not less than a king. Hmm. I am not less. Mm-hmm. And that is the core of my ministry, of bringing women to the liber- to liberation into leadership. Because you can never come into the fullness of leadership mm. as a woman mm. without being liberated mm. in your mind. And when we take liberation now, it's not liberation for giving, giving you a license for sin, a license for lawlessness, a license for foolishness, a license for no order. No. And a license to think that men are not important. Oh my God, they are as important as I am. And I am as important as they are. And so that understanding of equity, of justice, is what I deal with at the core. Because the axe must be laid at the root of the tree, not on the branches. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much for that one. Um, just as we begin to till towards the end of the conversation, I would like to ask you this one. Um, what other stakeholders do you think we have not engaged, that we still need to engage in order to actually influence the spread of advocacy towards the end of violence against girls and women? Parents. Parents? Mm. Parents are the chief incubator mm. of whether a child becomes violent or non violent. Mm. I have a son by the grace of God, I have a daughter. Mm. I've told my son that the day I hear that he touched his wife in any form by shopping, abusing, I will be on the next flight. That I am one woman, that I'm a mother forever. I'm a mother. You like you are fault to you, I'll be your mama. And my mother will be to straighten up you from any nonsense. I will beat the beating. If I cannot do the beating, I will hire someone to help me out. Then when you get the beating, you know how the beating feels. Hmm. I told my son, my son is 25, but hmm. he has it in his psychic. Psychic. The purpose of parenting is to create value based children. Every nonsense, foolish, 
man that is abusing his wife or vice versa, as the case may be, is coming from a home where violence was either demonstrated and mama tolerated it, or where mama was absent, absent, papa was absent, and they tolerate over pampered. Because sometimes violence comes from children who think they have rights to have everything in life. So when their wife tells them no, they go gaga. Mm. So when you are raising your son, like I tell the women around me, you're raising your son, and I want one of them, I say, if I catch your son doing nonsense, mm. I, I'm caught off my relationship with him. Because all of us, some of you have complained about violence from men, but the sons you're raising, you're not raising them any different. So parents, PTA schools, invading the school at the lesson, at the primary school level. That little shortly, bullying is a sign of what the man is capable of doing tomorrow, or vice versa for the lady. So if we are busy talking to our balladbats who have become rotten and, and almost uh, destructive, mm. to get solution that is sustainable, we need to go to the roots, to the young boy. So we have so many things for young girls, oh, women submit, women do this, women do that. Who is talking to the guy? Mm. Who is talking about authentic leadership to the guy as a man? That authenticity of a man is the one that knows how to celebrate a woman and elevate her status mm. and is not intimidated. Mm. All right. Where are they teaching mm. in that level? So mm. that is one place we should do. Mm. Apart from talking to the women, instead of just talking to the men alone, we, we need should. to go mm. to the child. Mm. And if we succeed at that level, mm. the child herself will not take what the man gives or dishes out mm. and vice versa. Mm. All right. Thank you so much. Blah, 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 blah. Mm, mm. Thank you so much, Juliet. Mm. Thank you very much, Juliet, for that one. I do appreciate you. Uh, without a doubt, religious education and counseling are really essential for women of religious background, as this will help address their experiences and victimization. Now, religious texts and teachings can also be used to assist those who have been abused in finding safety. And on the other hand, it can also be used to justify or condone abuse abusive behavior. Now, to help shape the conversation about violence against girls and women, religious leaders must be aware of the need to create awareness in the fight on violence against women and girls at worship centers and also reach out to victims and survivors. Yes. Mm, Condemn it mm, for support. Thank you so much, Reverend Juliet Benitier, for being on the show. It's my pleasure, absolutely. I'm, I, I'm, my apologies. I think I, I got a call earlier on, mm. but I got a bit distracted. But thank you for the honor All and right. pleasure. It's yes, fine. do enjoy the rest of your day. We shall. We are pampering ourselves right now. <laughs> and we are having some fun. Mm. Oh, yeah. All I right. don't think anyone needs to know. Mm. Like she's not an inferior being. She mm. has the right to enjoy her life. Yes. All right. Bye for now. Bye. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, so there you have it from the my guest for today, Reverend Juliet Benitia, the President of Precious Jewel Ministries. So many thanks to you for being a part of the big question for today. I just want to appreciate you. And please, if you notice any form of abuse against women in your community, ensure that you report it. Let us come together. Let us be united. And let us be deliberating, eliminating violence against women and girls. Many thanks to the producer of the show, Elizabeth Akwaribe, and to the executive producer, Tom Okewale Shonaya. I say thank you. The Big Question is a program where we discuss and prefer solutions to issues affecting us as a nation and our citizens. Remember that conversations like this don't end here. We must continue to raise awareness on issues, continue to speak about the problem, and most importantly, prefer solutions to it. And of course, remember to continue to be patriotic Nigeria. Anywhere and everywhere you find yourself. I am Blessing. Good afternoon.